Hey, what's up? I'm here with Jason from Authority Zero, and we got Fletcher from Pennywise. What's up, guys? How you doing, man? Thanks for uh, coming to Canada. Welcome back. I'm sure you guys have been here many times at this point. Yeah, for us, it's, it's been a few years for us, actually, but uh, yeah, when was the last time you guys were here? Uh, I think for us, what has it been, like three three years or something like that? Yeah. Too long, I think. Or actually, no, we played. I think we played here with Offspring uh, like maybe last year at some point. So, yeah, maybe not that long ago. Oh, you guys were up on the Warp Tour too, right? Uh, we didn't do Toronto on the Warp Tour. You guys didn't do it. Eh? We only did Edmonton, actually. We oh. we were just on. We hopped on in um, like Washington, did Florida, and came across. Went up to Edmonton, down to like Denver, Salt Lake, and whatever. And did like three weeks, but we didn't make Toronto. So, looking forward to tonight. To tonight. Perfect. Thanks for coming. Um, okay. Well, I guess right off the bat, uh, Jason. Um, yeah. I mean, we're gonna talk about your new record, but uh, how'd you hook up with Fletcher? I mean, you're on his new label. Yeah. Explain the whole the whole thing. Uh, the new label they started up is called Viking Funeral Records, yeah. and uh, it's an imprint of Subnoise Records out there in uh, California. And uh, we pretty much had done some shows with these guys, you know, throughout the years, and some touring as well in the past. And uh, we were finishing up the record, and uh, Ken Seaton with Hardline Entertainment. Uh, kind of came to us saying that, that him and Fletcher were talking about putting the, the label together and that it had a lot of the uh, kind of same feel you know that of a lot of the labels we grew up listening to uh, of the bands that were on were like Epitaph and like Fat Wreck and Theology and all that stuff and uh, it just seemed like a really cool idea and we, we just kind of flowed with it went with it you know got the record done is that my phone I'm not supposed to have service here <laughs> no leave it there it's cool I hope it's not an iPhone man you're gonna get a big bill no uh, Blackberry I just got it yesterday <laughs> Even bigger, Bill. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's been great, man. It's been really great ever since we got the record going. They've been doing a great job pushing it out there for us and helping us out along the way. And um, you know, again, here we are in uh, Canada with them, doing some touring and stuff. So now, Fletcher, I mean, uh, considering how long you've been in, uh, you know, the music industry and you know, staple of punk rock, uh, why did you decide to to step into the label role? Um. Because it's like the best time to put out records in the history of music. Because <laughs> everything's free. Uh, uh, everything's free and available on the internet. It just shows you how greedy I am. Um, it uh, it just kind of presented itself. Uh, I think that there's an opportunity now to do do bands like Authority Zero and you know whoever the next band might be. You know, Guttermouth, TSOL, who knows? Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of really great punk bands spanning over the last 10 15 years 20 years that don't have a home anymore like a lot of major labels obviously aren't signing punk bands really anymore they're you know how major labels are they're always they're always ch changing to whatever is the flavor of the moment and punk rock's out so uh a lot of the indies have closed their doors due to the whole internet you know giveaway um sale that's going on with music and so Bands still need labels. You know, a lot of bands have tried to put out their own records, and that's a that's a risky venture. You know, you put up a bunch of your own money, and and if things don't go well, you're out. So it's kind of cool to have a little team of people, I think, you know, behind you. And the guys at Subnoise really know what they're doing as far as like the infrastructure. And it's kind of for me, it's I would never be good. I'm not good at like you know paperwork or any of that shit. It's it's just for me, it's like about finding bands producing bands, getting bands in the studio for cheap, and getting their records done for like a reasonable amount of money and giving them a good deal so they can get out there and make some money if they happen to sell records. So uh, it's more just like, you know, a fun thing and trying to keep like what we grew up doing alive. And, you know, just it's just hard out there for bands to even find labels and, and especially punk bands to find labels. So uh, here we are, you know, 30 Joe first and we'll, we don't even know who's second, but we'll We'll figure out somebody. Well, I mean, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you right away was, uh, you know, all those years on Epitaph. Uh, obviously, they're an independent label. A lot of great bands came off that label. Um, you know, that and, like, you guys were on the BYO records thing. You know, so you're, you're down with all these dudes that have labels. You know, Fat Mike, I'm sure you guys are friends with him. Yep. So, I mean, did you did you, did you see the way that those labels were operated and, and you sort of, did you know, did you, pick, did you pick up things? Or is there anything um, like that? Oh, I mean, yeah, it's it's... Like being on an independent label is the greatest learning experience in the world because, I mean, as far as Pennywise was, was concerned, we kind of got to write our own ticket and do our own marketing. Of course, they had input, but we had hands-on, you know, everything. So it's you learn how to market a certain type of music versus a major label that's going to go out there and throw a bunch of money at a $400,000 video and a bunch of money at radio and, 
and blah blah blah. And if it doesn't if it doesn't catch on, it doesn't get the plays. Yeah. They shelf it or it's done, and the band owes them five hundred thousand dollars. Like independent labels, all about making record cheap, giving a band a good a good deal. I mean, Epitaph's got Social D coming out on 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 the on their label, and also Weezer, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that just uh, that's a sign of the times. Like when you have bands that big, they were also talking to Pearl Jam. You know, they put out Zach, Zach De La Roche's um, little side project uh, as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of a lot of people are getting smart. They're saying, hey, you know what we need? We need like a fair, you know, royalty rate, and we need a team of people that can get our records into the stores and and do what we need to do as a band. Because you get like individual treatment at a, at a at a independent. So of course we learned all that. I mean. If I was smart, I would have started a record label before Fat Mike, you know? <laughs> and, I mean, like, I was taking, like, strung out demos to Brett Gerowitz. He's all, well, I already have no effects in Pennywise. Why do I want this band? And Fat Mike's like, I'll start a label. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll take the, the sound-alike bands. And, and so, I mean, even, even you know, Fat Records is, is in trouble as far as, like, you know, everybody's in trouble as far as selling records. But there's still a market for it. Just because you're not selling 100000 and you're only selling ten or fifteen or 20000 or whatever, you're still selling records, you know, and that's you got to get your music out there if you're going to go play to the kids. And there's a lot of bands that still want to play and and you know write music. You know, uh, one thing I, I want to we'll get to authority zero. I got tons of questions for you. Don't worry, Jason. Uh, yeah, you just just right rest yeah. your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the you know on the indie record, you know the label thing, like you get bands like you know. All those fat bands I've talked to, and like a lot of bands on Epitaph, and you know Pennywise was known for staying and choosing that route. You know, you, we're talking about the market for it now. And one thing I find interesting is that all those bands are happy they never made that decision to go to a major label. Are you happy you guys never did it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Bad Religion is a good example of that. You know, they went to a yeah. major and now they're back at Epitaph, and they didn't get any bigger when they're on when they're on the major. Um, yeah. It's I mean, if you look through a major label contract and you start talking to major label people, it's kind of like I don't know if you if you've had a taste of the indie life, then you're you know it's it's pretty it's pretty much a turnoff. I mean, a lot of people work there cool, you know, a lot of bands have made it big on majors, but then you know those same bands if they're not making it big, then they're just kicked to the curb. You know, yeah. we released our last record on on Epita- I mean on uh, MySpace for free. Now yeah. it wasn't a major label; it was an indie label, but. Um, the way we worked it was, you know, like a, a one-off deal that was really crazy. It had a lot of weird stuff in it, but it was, you know, give our record away free. We went to Epitaph, and we said, hey, Brett, you know, he wanted to put out our record, and we said, look. He started, you know, immediately saying, oh, you, you're not going to MySpace, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, here, check this out. And he read it, and he goes, this is insane. This is an insane deal. You have to do this. What can we do to help? Wow. You know, so that's the beauty of, like, somewhere like Epitaph, where... You know, you have a, a musician and a punk rocker running the label, and he knew it was too good to be true. Like, we got to give away 550,000 records, you know, yeah. and still, you know, you get our record paid for it. It's, it was pretty cool, but now, call it Brett, hey, we got a new singer. Um, we want to put out a record. He's like, You're, we're here. Just let, let us know when you want to do it. So it's, it's that kind of mentality that makes independent labels so great, and I mean, Obviously, I've been in a band for a while. Ken Seaton, you know, our my partner it, in the label, has been around you know music for the last 25 years and been around Pennywise since day one. And uh, he's a do it do it yourself kind of guy, you know. So we it's it's not it's a it's about everyone getting a fair deal and like you know being able to come to your label and say whatever the fuck you want to say and and hopefully get results, you know. And, and being able to sit down and talk to someone and not get some bullshit answers. Like, we're not we're not trying to bullshit. We're just trying to make sure these guys get their record out and people get to hear it and enjoy it. Last question on the label tip is uh, back in the 90s, you know, when punk broke and went mainstream and you had your Green Days and your Offsprings, did you guys ever get some kind of crazy, ridiculous offers that you were just like, this is crazy? Well, um, we never actually took it, like, got to the point where we actually took an or even, you know, took a meeting. Like, we had people wanting to meet us you know and and we would just kind of go ah you know i can buy my own lobster dinner you know we knew we knew <laughs> what it would entail you know it was yeah. going to go out to dinner have some guy like blow smoke up your ass yeah. and then you know next day later you're going to get an offer and it was like we were already making good money at epitaph you know there's i mean i don't you know i mean if someone came out and said a million dollars you know which could have been possible 
what we would have done, we would have probably said no. I mean, you know, it was like we didn't even want to hear about it. It was just wasn't our our thing, and we we'd already heard horror stories about other bands, you know, on major labels that had their project shelves and stuff, and it just it was like we just flat out pretty much denied meetings. We'd hear rumors, hey, these guys want to give you, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars. You know, they got a lot of money and they got this, and I still hear that today. I mean, I hear it, I hear it all the time. Like now that we're not signed to anybody, like. People are still calling me and are still trying to get to us. These guys are starting this new label. Like, one of the some rap dude had a bunch of money and he wanted. To, he's starting a label, like a bunch of money, and he and he wanted to do some punk bands and he really wanted to sign us. And I'm just like, ah, you know, I could take that meeting, but I pretty much know where it's going to go, nowhere. And as a matter of fact, we did take a meeting with one guy that was starting the supposed independent label, and it was just like it was insane. Like, it wound up being in his garage. He was supposed to be some big... Uh, you know what? I can't say this. Let's just say, recently we took a meeting because we were trying to figure out, like, where we're going to go. We're we going to Epitaph, this, that, and the other. Yeah. Before I had talked to Brett and some yeah. people, you know, still want to meet with us and stuff. And it was like that one meeting right there, even though it was like an independent thing, was just like, this is why I don't associate with the people in the music business those kind of people you know yeah, yeah. that's why i associate with like fat mike and brett and you know people like that that know what time it is like that are actually punk rockers that you can sit down and have a beer with and and like get it you know other people they just start talking shit and you just sit there and just laugh and laughing on the inside like yeah. can't get to the door fast enough so yeah yeah, yeah. cool Good for we'll, you we'll keep it real we'll try yeah, to yeah. keep it real congratulations on the record thank um, you or sorry the label Explore Music wears English Laundry Apparel.